I'm Jesse Moan with the University of Alaska Fairbanks Cooperative Extension Services Integrated Pest Management Program. Many of our recommendations for spruce beetle refer to processing the material. This video will go through what that means, what processing options are available, and timelines for those activities. This information can be applied to individual trees in ornamental settings or to a small woodlot or larger forest setting. This video is part of a series, so be sure to check out our videos on identifying the signs and symptoms of spruce beetle and how to evaluate a dead tree for more information on those topics. The purpose of processing spruce beetle infested material is to prevent the beetle from completing its life cycle by either killing the beetles outright or destroying their habitat. These practices can contribute to lower beetle populations in an area and help prevent surrounding trees from becoming infested. One option for processing material is chipping. Trunks and branches larger than 5 inches in diameter should be chipped. This action will kill some individuals and allow the inner bark to dry out, preventing beetles from completing their life cycle. Ideally, chipping would be completed in fall or winter, shortly after the tree is felled. If you are having your tree removed by a tree care company, many have industrial chippers and can chip the material for you. If you are removing the tree yourself, chippers may be rented from equipment rental or sales shops. Debarking is another option for processing material. Removing the bark from the trunk and large branches is one of the most effective ways to eliminate spruce beetle habitat, since the beetles live directly beneath the bark. Debarking can be a difficult and time-consuming job, so it may not be a suitable option in all situations. It is best to debark trees as soon after felling as possible. Several tools are available to debark a tree, including draw knives, debarking spuds, and chainsaw attachments. A draw knife is a double-handled blade which can be used to remove bark with long strokes. It can be slow and tedious and may not be the best option when processing a lot of trees. However, it may be an ideal option if you are hoping to use the logs for cabins or wood products and want as little damage to the wood as possible. A debarking spud consists of a short blade mounted on a long handle. To use it, first scrape a strip of bark off that is the length of the log. Then, working from the cleared strip, pry the rest of the bark off, working down the log around its circumference. This process is also time consuming and requires much effort. Chainsaw attachments have also been developed for debarking logs. These attachments speed up the debarking process and require less effort to use. However, they may not be ideal for all situations. Cutting or felling trees can be dangerous. Make sure to take proper safety precautions and wear all personal protective equipment. If you do not have experience operating a chainsaw, it may be best to hire a professional instead. Chainsaw attachments utilize the motor of the saw to power a smaller blade attached to the end of the chainsaw bar. The blade rotates forward from the bar, therefore to cut the bark the saw is moved backward toward the cutter. While this is a quicker method of debarking, the attachment does take a decent bite out of the wood, so this option may not be useful for all situations. For all debarking options, keep in mind that the trees will need to be limbed as close to the trunk as possible for the easiest use of each of the equipment options discussed. Take the time to choose a debarking option that best suits your needs and make sure you are working in safe conditions, taking all safety precautions, and wearing all personal protective equipment. There are a few other options that you may consider for processing infested material, including burning the material. Burning should be done in accordance with all local and state burning ordinances and should be done before the active flight period of May to July. Burying the material. Infested material should be buried soon after the tree is felled and should be covered with at least 8 inches of soil. This may only be practical when large equipment is available to dig, bury, and move logs. Split and use for firewood. A good use of beetle-infested material is as firewood. Material should be split early and stacked loosely to speed up the drying process. It is best to burn this material before the active flight period the following spring. 
For additional information on spruce beetles and firewood, visit the Alaska Division of Forestry's Firewood Information. Processing spruce beetle infested material can be a difficult and time consuming task, but it can have many benefits to helping mitigate spruce beetle populations in an area. Before you begin, make sure that you're taking all safety precautions and make sure that your tools are in good working order. For more information on spruce beetles and spruce beetle management, visit www.alaskasprucebeetle.org.